We believe that it's always a good opportunity for them to hone their craft. We certainly want to um, welcome each and every one of them. They will introduce themselves in a few minutes, but I certainly want to thank their parents for uh, buying in tonight. And so let's give the parents of our debaters a hand tonight. They really are the backbone of Dynamic Debaters Anonymous, and they would understand that very clearly when it's a tournament and it's time for them to take over the teams. But I'm sure they're glad tonight that this is kind of a kind of minor event. I want to acknowledge my wife at the back. Good evening, Zena. How are you? All right. Uh, and uh, we have other celebrities in our midst, which we will introduce in the next debate, uh, which will be uh, we'll have some high school boys against some of our leading um, our citizens. Uh, but so that we can start on time, we are going to begin this debate right away. And uh, we hope that you enjoy the evening. We certainly want to uh, acknowledge all of the, the team from Green Rock and anyone who's here from Community and Cultural Affairs. Uh, we thank you for this opportunity. Thanks to the team here at Heritage Worship Center, Michael, thank you very much, and Pastor Lamb for uh, giving us uh, access to the building tonight. Uh, a church that's really involved in, in the community. You may or may not know that there's also a big community meeting going on next door. So this church is the church uh, for, for the community and we think that is very relevant. Uh, so I'll move out of the way. Our speaker of the house tonight is going to be Nathan Rigo and the evening uh, speaker uh, for the next debate is going to be Yosef Baya and Kishan is our timekeeper for this first debate. So let's welcome our speakers and timekeepers and we are going to start this debate. Good evening everyone. Welcome to the Green, Run, Green Rocks Debate Exhibition featuring youth and adults in debate. Tonight's debate is the, this is this house supports renewable energy rather than fossil, fossil fuel. We will now have the affirmative team to introduce themselves. Good evening, my name is Kamika Jackson. I am 11 years old and I am the first speaker of the affirmative. Good evening, my name is Shannon Seymour. I attend San Takani Middle School. I'm 12 years old. I am the third speaker of the affirmative. Good evening, my name is Lillian Griffiths. I attend BHS and I'm 11 years old. We will now have the negative team to introduce themselves. Good evening, my name is Megan Sutton. I'm 11 years old and I'm the first speaker of the Negative. Good evening, my name is Julia Santa. major problems for the earth, our environment, and our future livelihood. Sun, wind, and water are perfect energy sources. They are non-polluting, renewable, and efficient. Which leads me to the motion. This house supports renewable energy instead of fossil fuels, and we strongly and firmly agree with the motion. Which leads me to my principal statement. Renewable energy eliminates the significant problem of greenhouse gas contributing to global warming. We define the keywords as follows. We define fossil fuels as a fuel made from, a, from the remains of plants and animals that have died hundreds of millions of years ago and began bur buried way underneath the Earth's surface where the remains collectively are transformed into combustible materials we use for fuel. Examples are coal, oil, and natural gas. Renewable energy comes from natural resources such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, and geothermal heat that are naturally replenished. Now I will divide the case of the affirmative. I, the first speaker, will discuss how renewable energy has less of an impact on the environment and how fossil fuels are a major source of greenhouse effect of the greenhouse effect, thus renewable energy reduces the threat of global warming. My second speaker will discuss how environmental hazards 
that fossil fuels provide and sustainability of renewable energy. And my third speaker will adequately destroy the opponent's arguments, no one of my case. Ladies and gentlemen, renewable energy has a reduced impact on the environment. They are simple, all you need is sunlight, running water, and or wind. They create their own energy and are naturally found in our environment. They are clean and do not have side effects that damage the environment. Unlike fossil fuels, which are burned and create carbon dioxide, the number one greenhouse gas contributing to global warming. In 2008, it Except. But wouldn't you actually agree that the greenhouse effect is only theory? Actually, no, I don't, because as I said, that this is making a huge impact on the climate, and it is, and it, and it's, and now it's going to make a huge impact the further one on life. In 2008, it was reported that. 79% of the U.S. carbon dioxide emissions came from fossil fuels. This is causing polar caps to melt and causing the sea level to rise, which surely will eventually flood low-lying land areas. The rise in sea level will affect our agriculture and fishing of burning, of burning fossil fuels. Ladies, pollution is another significant, significant problem in our health and plant growth as a result of burning fossil fuels. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see the ripple effect of burning fossil fuels? They are damaging our environment and destroying our ecosystem while mining it and while using it as well. Except. But wouldn't you agree that certain things like windmills would definitely decline in the population of birds and hydroelectric dams would decline in many Well, actually, fossil fuels when they are when they produce oil spills and many other environmental hazards, which which actually kills more fish. As I said, it will it will the rise in sea level from the fossil fuels will affect our agriculture and fishing. And ladies and gentlemen, don't you think we need to stop destroying our environment and use renewable energy to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and secure future energy supplies? There's more than enough renewable energy sources to supply all of the world's energy needs forever. Not only do the uses of renewable energy sources help reduce global carbon dioxide emissions, but they also add some some much needed flexibility to the energy resource mix by decreasing our dependence on limited reserves of fossil fuels. We want you to preserve our environment and use the simple and effective energy source that will not destroy our lives. Renewable energy is the solution to the problem of global warming and its ripple effect on our environment caused by burning fossil fuels and that is why we strongly and certainly agree with this mission. Ladies and gentlemen, would it, think of all the things that we have done in the last, let's say, 150 years since we found the oil strike. We have advanced so much. Do you really want to take this away? The best thing that is debatably the best thing that ever happened to man? Which leads me to, my, to the motion, this house supports renewable energies instead of fossil fuels. Which leads me to my principal statement, which is, with fossil fuels are the best thing that ever happened to mankind. Now I have to rebut what the first speaker of the affirmative had to say. She said that um, renewable energies eliminate bad things. Well, as I did point out in the point of information, hydroelectric dams will decline many people in fish populations and the windmills will also make a huge impact on the bird populations. She also said that the greenhouse effect will be gone. Well, if the greenhouse effect does actually exist, if they're saying that we stop using fossil fuels, then the carbon dioxide that is supposedly up there would still be there and would still have a negative effect on our environment. 
And also she said that fossil fuels decline. Fossil fuels make oil spills. Well, wouldn't you agree that there are ways of stopping oil spills, but you need fossil fuels to make those things to stop them? Now we'll divide the case of the negative. Decline. I, the first speaker, will um, discuss the cons of solar and geothermal renewable energies and also that we will be going back in time without fossil fuels. My second speaker, will, Judea, will discuss potential for chains and everything ties up to fossil fuels. Now on with my case. Ladies and gentlemen, like the first speaker of the affirmative said, geothermal is um, a renewable source of energy. But wouldn't you agree, because we have to drill into the ground for fossil fuels, you will be drilling into the ground again for geothermal energy, because geothermal is where you use heat from the ground to power things. And also, if you're using solar power, like we do if we did in Bermuda, and we collect the rain on our roofs, where will we get the water from? Because if we're using so many solar panels, to except Yes, but wouldn't you agree, because it's so humid here, that maybe if the water went in, it would create damp and then possibly break the kind, and then possibly even break the solar panels, costing us even more money than fossil fuels would. And also, then, decline. Then, so how we collect our water without possibly endangering ourselves? And also, if we were to switch back to without fossil fuels, what if it's not windy? And how are you going to do that? If you live in maybe a place that is windy most of the time, but you have a day that does not turn the wind turbines, what are you going to do? You might get rid of your light bulb just because they're so unreliable. And then you'd be going back to maybe using decline. And again, if they are suggesting using electric cars, then you would have to use the power, again, to do it, to charge it up. And then eventually, well, you'd be using fossil fuels. But my second speaker, decline. My second speaker will get into more depth with that. But you'd be going back to using maybe a horse and carriage to do things in town. And also, you might not want to use electricity because it's just so unreliable because you'd have constant brownouts. And then you'd probably go back to using candles. And honestly, ladies and gentlemen, that is more costly and really boring. Also, what the uh, Marlo Lewis, who is a governor in California, said that 85% of the world's energy, including 85% of the United States energy, comes from fossil fuels. These are the very fuels that the police aim to suppress. And in 20 years, 85% of the world's energy will still come from fossil fuels because we still haven't figured out how to meet the world's energy needs with safe and reliable um, renewable energies. They might have been suggesting nuclear power, but honestly, ladies and gentlemen, that is not safe. She also um, then, with what are the drawbacks to solar power? Solar power is practically useless as sources of base load power. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I certainly hope that my second speaker will go on to convince you more that this motion is a good one, and that's, no, it's a bad one, and that is why we certainly disagree with this motion. Five minutes and 14 seconds. Now I'd like to welcome the second speaker of the affirmative. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This house supports renewable energy, and we agree with the motion. Before I get on with my constructive argument set forth by my first speaker, let me give some rebuttal of what the first speaker of the negative had to say. She said that the way to stop oil spills, you need fossil fuels. I challenge you by saying that the way to stop oil spills, you don't need fossil fuels. You can just stop them by not, use, by not using oil. Now on with my constructive argument. For the past five weeks and today, in the news, it's shown us in the world with that 
The, the rewards of fossil fuels provide a huge risk. The provide a huge risk and responsibility that come along with pulling the types of energy from the earth. BP's oil rig, which exploded and killed 11 people, has larger potential of killing the environment decline, killing the environment and the, and the life that's in it. Since our island is in the Gulf Stream, we should expect to see tar on our beaches and our... except. But if we didn't have oil spills in the future, in, if we didn't have oil spills at all, then we wouldn't need these special things to, um, make, to clean up the oil spills. Um, and so we're going to find that our marine life is hurt and destroyed. We can't just throw chemicals on it or, or burn it or try to capture it with a sponge. It doesn't quite it doesn't work that way. This will affect the food chain and affect humans. Decline. We did not learn from the oil spill in Alaska 21 years ago. Decline. The Exxon tank spilled over 250,000 barrels of oil, which in Alaska alone is 1,000 300 miles of the coastline and 11,000 square miles of ocean. The total amount spent was over $2.1 million billion dollars. And the oil still remains on the beaches today. It is estimated that there has been half a million barrels spilt on, in the Gulf of Mexico. And with mining, with mining, thousands each year are killed from mining accidents. That would accept. But I'm not aware since 1956, only about 140 mining collapses worldwide, and only about 500 people have been killed. So really, that's not as big as it would take to build up hundreds of wells and dams. Um, well, if you were one of their family members, it would be a big thing for you. And this year, from the past six months, 195 people have been killed so far from just oil mining explosions, collapsing of mines, dust, um, flooding, and fires. Decline. Once the coal is extracted from the earth, there's nothing left but po a hole posing danger on other, posing dangers. Many types of the energies that we use today were not used tw 20 years ago. Instead of getting electricity from plants that burn coal, we can use, um, we can use solar panels or we can use wind, windmills. Pollutants harms plants, animals, people, and we have to take it with us everywhere. It has become a part of the environment in where we live and what we drink and eat. Do you want this for your children's children? As a Native American chief said, we do not inherit the earth from our parents, we borrow it from our children. And that's why we d agree with the motion. Five minutes, Let's welcome the second speaker of the menu.
Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This house supports renewable energies rather than fossil fuels. We disagree with the motion. Before I get on my constructive, set forth by my first speaker, let me rebut the arguments laid out by the opposition. The first speaker said that fossil fuel, I mean that renewable energies are simple. But I challenge that by saying, ladies and gentlemen, putting these big these big um, machines into the ground would take days and weeks and probably even years to get, to get them all set up and working. They also said that, um, the, that be the cost of, that they are good for the environment. Well, clearly, as my first speaker has stated, they will not be, windmills will not be good for the environment because they will decrease the, they will decrease the, the amount of birds that will be flying around. Now, or my constructive <laughs> decline. Ladies and gentlemen, fossil fuels are one, one of them. Exactly. You said that um, um, alternative energies are this, these really big things. So you think that um, fossil fuels that get all the oil are these tiny contractions that just scoop it up and bring it to us? Well, yes. It's only little. They are little things that are burnt to make bigger oils and and coal and stuff. Anyway. Fossil fuels are one of the most important sources of energy. However, the whole world is debating on the use of fossil fuels and, it, and its impact on the environment. Now let's look at the importance of fossil fuels. Well, look around you. Nearly everything you see that is not organic is possi was, possibly made, possibly, was possible by fossil fuels in one way or another. When you mention fossil fuels, most people immediately think oil. It's, dominant, it's the dominant form of fossil fuels, but there are other, others including coal, including coal and even wood. Oil, oil is the evil polluting fl fluid based on what you read on the internet, but with all with, but without it decline, but without it, the industrial revolution, which started 150 years ago, would not have happened. Moreover, the convenience of our modern day lives would be nonsense. Think about, think of everything that is plastic in your life. Oil is, the, is a critical component to plastic, which will eliminate all those items as well. And what about coal? Coal is plentiful and tremendous, and a tremendous energy producers, energy producer decline. Coal is burnt to generate energy in power plants, and and it does so actively. With, with all it, the lights Information. in your home accept. Well, if we use the coal, if we use coal from the mines, then lots of people will die. Well, if we use coal, lots of people will die. Well, if people, some people are just adventurous and they will use coal. Well, if people, some people are just adventurous and they're willing to take their lives to, prov to provide energy for people. Coal limestone, coal limestone, for example, are fossilized forms of living organisms containing the dominant amount of carbon. Yep, that's right, limestone, the stone most Bermudian homes are made of. Now think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Fossil fuels is linked to everything we use today, even the so-called renewable energy. Let me take your attention to the battery electric vehicles. One of the popular forms of technology trying to replace fossil fuels. Batteries are, are now being used to power eco-friendly or hybrid cars that are, that, are, 
that are supposed to be great for the environment, but batteries are horrible and dangerous for the environment, which contain many materials like lead being the worst, which cause birth defect, defects and learning dis, dis, disabilities in the children. And that's why we disagree with the motion. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This house supports that renewable energy, um, this house um, agrees that renew, um, we should use renewable energies instead of fossil fuels. We certainly agree with the motion. As of that to speak, I will give a clear rebuttal of the opposition's argument, set forth by my first and second speaker. Um, be, before I want to start, I would like to say that 206 people have died in the last month because of fossil fuels. People are dying because of these energies, and they think it's a good thing. Um, and, uh, and now I would like to start with my rebuttal. They said that hydroelectric dams will kill more people, I mean more fish, than fossil fuels will. So you're saying in an oil spill, absolutely no fish die. They can just swim in these um, they can swim in these fossil fuels, and nothing will happen except. Um, okay, um, things will die with alternative energies, but at the same time, um, with fossil fuels, people are dying because of these oil spills and um, them exploding, and the fish are dying because um, they can't swim in the, this oil. Save the polar bears because they're dying too. The penguins are dying. So you're saying? Um, Decline. Only because um, people, um, people and things are dying for our energy. You think that absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing is dying for your energy? Well, um, how many people have died? Except? Yes. Okay. okay. Um. Okay. Um. Tell me this right now. How many? Really? How many people have died from our energy? Can you name anyone? Bobbed on the street? No. So, this proves that our energy is safe. Um. And finding fossil fuels. Um. She said that finding fossil fuels was the best thing that man ever did. But um, I'm sorry, honey, but fossil fuels ran against us, and they're killing people. They killed us. Point of information. Except. Well, would you like to see going around in a field in the horse's cart right now? And don't call me honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, okay. Um, and, um, right? Um, you think that any if fossil fuels weren't fun, we'll be going around with this horse in front of us, right? But you're wrong. Um, with solar panels, they save the energy where you could put it in your car, right? Yeah. And then um, you could drive. Hmm. And um, without fossil fuels, wait. And she also said that um, the um, she said that fossil fuels are this tiny thing, right, that don't take up any space. But um, last time I checked, those tanks that they put fossil fuels in there are like, whoa. And um, like they're not this inty binty thing. And um, she said it would take days and weeks to make alternative energies. Um, 
Okay, fine, it will take days and weeks to make these alternative energies. But look, um, it will last forever, so isn't this a good thing? Your fossil fuels take days and weeks to build those things in the middle of the ocean, but they won't last forever, so... Next up. Oh. Um, and because of these alternative energies, me, people will get jobs without putting their lives at risk. And also, she, when we said that people die, she said people are adventurous and will take the risk. So you're saying you're going to let somebody go over there, die, and say, well, they decided, so I don't really care. Um, and also, she, um, she said that also alternative, yeah, also alternative energies will get people jobs, like I said before, and more people will have jobs uh, without putting their lives at risk. And this is why me, my team, and I'm pretty sure the whole audience totally agrees with this motion. Good evening. My name is Shane Boris, and I'll be your third speaker of the negative. This house supports renewable energies instead of fossil fuels. I, the third speaker, will give clear bottles of the affirmative said earlier. The first speaker of the negative said, fossil fuels burn and then the, the burn stuff puts on carbon dioxide all into the atmosphere. But, I, but what I have to say is that but, this fossil, but these fossil fuels are the good guy. We need them. They, they help us survive. Also, the first speaker of the affirmative said, um, wind, wind energy source and water energy source will be a great energy source for energy. But I challenge it by saying, but where those energies, but where those energies um, give us the ability to work, where they light our houses, Will they um, power our vehicles? Will they power our, not now. Will they, um, will they, they, will, will they power our cars? Will they power our trains? Will they power our planes? Will they power our rockets? N not now. Will they um, warm our homes? Will they give us, um, will they wash our clothes? Will they iron our clothes? Will they give us clean clothes? Will they cook our food? Will they uh, give us the ability to do our foods, etc. Oil, um, do fossil fuels iron your clothes already, or do you have to stand Okay, no, no. Um, last time I checked, fossil fuels gives you the ability to work. Does um, uh, iron work? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. As I was, uh, as I was saying, they um, clean our homes, they play, our, they give us music, they give us pictures on the tablet, tablet, televisions, and they will, they power our uh, machines and factories. And, and our tractors on a farm. And the list goes on and on. Not now. Also, um, the second speaker of the, of the affirmative. No, thank you. Also, the second speaker of the affirmative said, said, we should use char instead of fossil fuels. But why would you use chard? Do you know why? And I know you're going to use a point of information later on, yeah. Okay. Um, also, so, no, no, thank you. Also, um, the second speaker of the firm just, yes. What's chard? I didn't mention it, she did. You never said you chard. Yes, she did. I don't know, people are deaf these days. 
also, um, the third speaker, Shane, Shane and Seymour, said that fossil fuels are causing, I, no, the second speaker of the pharmacy said, fossil fuels are causing a problem in our homes. But I, but this is what I have to say. How, no, thank you. But how is lights warming our food, ironing our clothes, giving us TV, washing our, washing our clothes, washing our dishes, etc., a problem to our houses? And would you want to go um, use candles instead of lights to light up your house and use um, horse and carriages instead of bikes, bikes and, yes. Hmm? I said, would you rather use instead of lights using candles to light them home? Thank you. Well, um, ex at, uh, no, let me go on. Well, um, will, y will we use horse and carriages instead of bikes and cars? I bet not. Also, the direct speaker of the firm just said, alternative energies last forever. But I just say is that, but alternative energies, do they even, do, they don't even any, um, give us a lot of energy. They give us half of fossil fuels. And that's why we, you know, and that's why we d disagree with the motion. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This house supports renewable energies instead of fossil fuels. We certainly disagree with this motion. Now let's take a look at the key points of my opponent. They said that hydroelectricity is reliable and there is more than enough renewable energies to, do, to give the whole world power and a little bit more. They also said that it their renewable energies are clean, safe, and reliable. And also, the way to stop oil spills is to stop using fossil fuels. And my third speaker adequately destroyed their arguments. Now let me remind you what we have said. We said you need fossil fuels to stop oil spills because you have to use a special pipe made of man-made fibers produced by using oil spills. They're they challenged our case by saying that the only way to stop oil spills now is to stop using oil. Well, as their second speaker said in a lot more detail than I'm about to say now, oil spills happen. You can't just levitate the oil out of the ground. You need certain equipment to get it out of the ground. So, honestly, how are we going to get it back in without using man-made fibers to get all the oil back in? And also, so that's how we countered argument. Then they also said that hydroelectric, hydroelectric kill more fish and fish species and humans. And they said that no, it doesn't. No, sorry. Fossil fuels kill more fish and people. Well, I'd say, ladies and gentlemen, that hydroelectricity is a bit more dangerous because if something gets clogged in the wheels, like let's say it takes in water and a fish gets stuck in there, then who's going to unclog it? Who's going to go down, risk their life even more than mining, and unclog it, and then probably get sucked in themselves and turned into fish food? And then also, they said that the electric cars save power and money. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a battery and it's a renew reusable battery, it runs out of juice. Then you take it back and you recharge it, just the same as a car battery then what's going to happen? After you've recharged it, after about the 50th, maybe 100th time, it's starting to go down to the point where you can only drive out of your drive and then you have to wait about three more hours for you to get a few more yards out onto the road. How are you going to do that, ladies and gentlemen? You then have to throw away this heavy metal battery. Where does that come from? Fossil fuels. So what are you going to do with it? Yeah, let's just, um, let's 
put it in our front gardens. What are we going to do then? It's going to harm even more things than fossil fuels ever will. Also, they said the no, sorry, we said that many, many people die making up reusable energies. They have to climb kind of these hundred feet poles just to get these wind turbines turning and to turn the energy energy into a usable energy for homes, you have to be able, it uses energy from the energy supply they already have, so then you get even less energy than you would with fossil fuels, which is instantly turned into an energy that you can use safely and your lamps won't blow up. And also, so ladies and gentlemen, if there's a, pa a blackout, most people aren't the happiest people in the world. If you want to cook maybe beef stew or something, and then suddenly the power goes out just as you're about to put it in the oven. What are you going to do? Yeah, let's go out, let's chop some wood and let's light a fire because we don't have any fossil fuels to power it because it's not windy if you're relying completely on turbines. What are you going to do? And Belco have blackouts maybe once or twice a year. So with re renewable energies, we're not re really making it all as good as the affirmative are trying to make it. We're making it as an unreliable source that will have constant brownouts. And that is why we certainly disagree with this motion. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and fellow debaters once again, this House supports renewable energies instead of fossil fuels, and we strongly and firmly agree with this motion. Before I go on, ladies and gentlemen, imagine yourself as a killer whale. You are swimming around when you decide to st stick your head out of the water to take a breath. As you are taking a breath, you see a large stream of thick black oil heading your way. You go, you go back underwater and it only to find other animals dying one by one because, of, because the oil is damaging their bodies. Now, let's look at, let's look at some points of my opponents. They have said that if we have solar power, power with solar panels, where will we catch water? But I challenge this by saying we have, we have the waterworks where they dig pipes underground to transfer water to transfer water to your home. They also said fossil fuels, fossil fuels are the main thing we use today to light the homes, but renewable energies, that can be our source of energy because they will, they will get energy and transfer th that energy to our homes as well. My third speaker adequately destroyed their arguments. Now let me remind you what we have said. We have said how renewable energies have a lesser impact on the environment and how renewable energies cut down this greenhouse effect and fossil fuels is the main source of this greenhouse effect. Our opponents don't get that although they have said fossil fuels exist and provide a valuable service for energy, what but I say what good is it if it produces a huge impact on the environment? The, the, the side effects of using them create major problems for the earth, our environment, and our future livelihood. They challenged our case by saying that geothermal is really not a good renewable energy source. You still have to dig up the earth and that is an impact on the environment. And we are not convinced that our opponents have adequately defeated our arguments. And that's why we strongly and firmly agree with this motion. I think we can give our debaters a better hand than that. I'm always very amazed at our young people ranging between the ages of 11 and 12. Um, if you can 
maybe think back to our memory lane. I don't know if we were quite as bold. Um, also, the way that they were able to entertain their uh, points with great sophistication and humor uh, really made this for a very good debate. So, debaters, I think that you did a really, really good job. Well done. Let's give them another hand. As stated, this is a show debate, so there is no adjudication. It was just for your uh, enjoyment and also, for, also an opportunity for you to think about the uh, arguments. Uh, we are going to prepare for the next debate, so uh, junior debaters, you can find your places down, down front. And we're going to have maybe about a seven minute uh, pause. But before we go any further, we want to just uh, enlighten everybody about debating. Um, you are given a topic, and obviously you have to have an affirmative team and a negative team, and it does not necessarily mean that the views that are expressed by either the affirmative or the negative is what, these, what the affirmative or negative believe. It's just that in a debate, it's an opportunity to have a rhetorical discussion. And so we want to let you know that uh, the, these debaters may not necessarily hold fast to their arguments, but they have to speak, speak with them with, with great confidence and assurance to influence you. So we want you to know that in the next debate, uh, that the debaters, the uh, gentlemen and the uh, citizens of, of Bermuda may not necessarily believe in what they're saying with great conviction, although they're going to demonstrate to you that, that that they can speak to it with conviction without necessarily believing it. So we're just, uh, I guess, educating the audience as it pertains to debate that you cannot uh, quote the uh, speakers and say this is what they believe. This is what they debated, but it may not be necessarily what they believe. Do, do, do you understand that? Okay, I don't think that we are as, as silly to kind of leave her and say, well, oh, shame on this person for saying that in a debate, because you have to be convincing whether or not you believe in it. And in fact, when I train my debaters and I figure out that they like one side better than the other, I make them do the side that, that they do not like. Because as a debater, you have to be able to speak to both sides of the argument as convincingly as the one that you are most passionate about. That's just simple 101 debate discussion and uh, intelligence. So we thought that we would share that with you so that when our debaters finish the next debate, no one comes and says, I didn't know that you believed that. Because they might not believe it. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay, great. So we'll, we'll take about a five minute pause and then we will begin the next debate. Thanks. Good evening once again. Uh, tonight is our featured uh, debate, and when Dean had talked to us about what might be an interesting night, we said that it might be good for our youth debaters to take on some members of the, uh, some adult members of our society, and we didn't quite dream that we would have such, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use, uh, illustrious. Uh, team before us. Um, be sure that they have been um, very, uh, what's the word I want to use, tentative in their, uh, I wouldn't say willingness because they certainly have been willing, but they do know that tonight may be an uphill battle for them. Uh, but we are so glad to have this as an opportunity for our young people, we think, to uh, engage with other members of our society. They may not quite know some of the members uh, on the team as well as I know I do, but this is a good opportunity. Maybe we can link or bridge maybe a generation gap. But I'm quite looking forward to this debate. I just would like to introduce our speakers from, uh, I guess, your left, my right. Uh, we have Glenn Simmons here. Yes, we could <laughs> welcome him. Coy Millet, Keyshawn Augustus, Senator Teo Dill, Kathy Micklemore, 
and the Honorable Sir John Swan. They will have an opportunity to introduce themselves once again, but I just want you to do that, to, to do that formally. Uh, you will hear the uh, topic of the debate, which will be read by our speaker. If you can stand, please, Yasser Bayer. Let's give him a hand. And our timekeeper, Kamika Jackson, let's give her a hand. And we're just about ready for this debate. So I'll move out of the way, and our, our speaker will begin this debate. Thank you, yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. It's on CNN, BBC, ZFB, and ZBM. Global warming is truly becoming a global problem, and we, as the citizens of Bermuda, must play a role in combating this, prop this pandemic. There is only one way to do this, making renewable energy mandatory, which leads me to the motion that this house believes that Bermuda should have mandatory renewable energy, and we as Team Proposition, the stronger team this evening, strongly support this motion. We as Team Proposition define the terms this evening as follows. This house being Bermuda, renewable energy being solar power, wind energy, and wave energy, and mandatory meaning non-negotiable. We on Team Proposition believe that we should do this because we can and because it's simply the way forward. The division of the points for Team Proposition are as follows. The problems we faced, the cause, and the plan, which I as the first speaker will address. My second speaker, Keyshawn, will then come up and speak of the benefits of this plan. And my last speaker, Glenn, will then come up here and give a clear rebuttal, totally dismantling and crushing the points that will be brought forward by Team Opposition. Now on with my constructive case. Ladies and gentlemen, driving down Front Street and various places throughout the island, it's no secret that the theme for this, for that this year's Heritage Month is green yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But let's really look at what this theme, what this theme calls for, because when we on Team Proposition checked, in 2009, Balco used over 738 million, million, I said, kilowatt hours of energy to power Bermuda. 
No, ladies and gentlemen, maybe it's just team proposition, but that doesn't seem too green to us. And if team opposition thinks that's green, well, well we really have a conflict of interest because, quite frankly, we, we all agree that if you continue to do the same things that you've done, you're going to continue to get the same results that you've got. And what we see is that over the last decade, let's just use the last decade for an example, each and every year, the amount of kilowatts of energy produced by Balco to, to give Bermuda energy has increased. And we, so we cannot sit up here and say that Bermuda does not contribute to the problem of global warming, but my second speaker will go on and address this later. So we see that there is a major problem that we, even in Bermuda, contribute to this. So we, have, so we were really green yesterday, and we're not really being green today, so clearly we can only be green tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, we see that there's a problem, and we see around the world that, that ladies and gentlemen, there's a threat of global warming with water levels rising, rising, the ice caps melting, something that isn't as very, but it's a reality that people are facing each and every day. And so we as Team Proposition feel that we as the members and citizens of Bermuda should stand and combat this problem. And as Team Opposition has given no points of information, we assume that they also agree with us. But ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to the plan that we would like to put forward to you today. Of course, Rome wasn't built overnight, so the, so the fulfillment of this plan will be gradual until the year two, 2040 when we would see this plan fully come into place. Our plan begins with two, but in 2020 when all homes in Bermuda will be, have hot water heaters powered by solar panels which will be produced and supply by Bermuda government. Now ladies and gentlemen, this simply says that if you do not choose to accept one of the solar panels, you do not have hot water. Surely we all know, one moment ma'am, surely we all know how much energy our, our hot water heaters use because if you're like me, you like a hot shower in the morning. So surely you know that one moment ma'am, surely you know that our hot water heaters use a lot of energy. Yes. Thank you, th thank you, ma'am. But, 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 but let's look at it. Let's, let's not look at the cost, but let's look at the cost to society and the environment. Because last time I checked, a cost is people dying when their homes are lost to floods. A cost is that, a tre that trees are being lost because we are not taking care of the environment. To me, that's a far greater cost, a cost than government investing in our future. Because you must remember that the one moment, man, that the earth is not ours, but it has been given to us and lent to us by our future generations. Accept it. The cost. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you very much, ma'am. Because thank, thank you, ma'am. Because you keep talking about the cost, but the, the cost. But let's 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 really weigh this out. Because when we have future generations, when their safety is going to be jeopardized, we can spend this money. Because quite frankly, if we don't spend it, we're not going to have an ass to give to our future generations. So it's either not have an ass for our future generations or invest in renewable energy. Invest in renewable energy clearly wins. So could you continue with this plan? By 2030, we would see that, that, that all homes will be 100% re reliant on renewable energy and businesses will be 20% reliable on re nuclear energy. And then by 2040, all homes still 100% reliable on renewable energy, while all businesses at least 30% reliable on renewable energy. This is something that we can really do. And Sir John Swan decided to build a building, and you know, in his, in his presentation, he never talked about the solar panels that he, would, that he wouldn't use. And you know why he's not going to use them? Because Teo and his government haven't made them mandatory yet. So clearly, the use of renewable energy is really going to help us in the future. So for these reasons, this motion must shout and will stand. Thank you. Good evening, friends, colleagues, and uh, the uh, opposition. The honorability of that group was yet to be determined. Now, the motion being presented uh, by the affirmative that green energy should be mandatory in Bermuda is, frankly, too vague to be useful or too impractical to make any real sense. Either way, the motion simply must not stand. Now, my task is to provide the two central macro problems with the affirmative's position, the big overall structural issues that ruin it in principle before it's able to be rendered practical. And my able second will elaborate on the more distinct half of that equation. And finally, my third will deconstruct the arguments presented by the affirmative. Speaking of that, I'm sure that the audience, uh, as sensible folks as you are, noticed 
that the affirmative speaker could not qualify with anything other than very loud and, and emotive rhetoric what the real cost of this plan would be. Now, we're having a discussion about a national mandate. When you're talking about national policy, you must react to data, to numbers, to figures, to science, not how you feel. So to be direct, not a decline, to be direct, macro problem number one with the affirmative position is that one